Archaeology is a pretty fascinating career. Long periods of boring digging can suddenly explode into a world of mystery and wonder when you finally hit pay dirt and dig up something really important. Often these items can fill in some of the story of an ancient people like the Romans or the Maya, but on other occasions they raise even more questions and blow a few minds because they just don't fit our current narrative. From the bizarre and creepy sarcophagus to the medieval Italian who is kind of like Barrett from Final Fantasy VII, here's 20 excavations that found mysterious and terrifying things. <laughs> Number 20. The Black Sarcophagus This weird tomb made of black granite has finally been opened, after it originally took the internet by storm. It was in Egypt, in the city of Alexandria. It was built before Alexander the Great came to the area in 332 BC. When people heard about the discovery, they thought that the huge coffin held Alexander's body, and that opening the scary-looking sealed coffin would start a huge curse. Neither of these ideas seem to be true, unless stinky sewage makes you feel cursed in some way, because this coffin was full of it. Gross! Inside the sarcophagus, archaeologists found sewage and the bones of three people. Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities thinks that it might be the bones of warriors. At some point in the past, a leak must have let the sewage water in. Even though the skeletons are still being studied, early results show that one of the people found in the sarcophagus had been hit by an arrow, which supports the whole warrior theory. So far, neither outside nor inside of the sarcophagus has been found to have any writing or even art on it, and this is very unusual. So who are these strange looking people? How and when did they die? Except for I guess we know the how for the arrow guy. What were they doing that deserved this death? None of those questions have been answered, and the black sarcophagus is still a mystery. Time for the rare topic. Scientists out in Australia were digging for dinosaur fossils when they came upon something totally unexpected. It was a dinosaur all right, but this was no fossil. In fact, it was perfectly preserved. And now questions are being raised about how this is even possible. Questions the Australian government apparently does not want to answer, as they shut down all debate and destroyed the images while the country was in its severe lockdown in 2021. And no one could try to stop them. Was this dino preserved by ancient humans? Or aliens? Or how about the possibility that dinosaurs still live in remote parts of Australia, and this one just recently died? As always, comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know what you think about what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 19. Medieval Italian man replaced his amputated hand with a weapon. This beautiful skeleton shows how an Italian warrior from the Middle Ages got by by wearing a weapon on his hand instead of a severed arm. This is just like Barrett from Final Fantasy, pretty badass. The bones of the medieval man from the 6th to the 8th century AD were found with the skeletons of a headless horse, many greyhounds, and hundreds of other animals. The warrior's hand was cut off with a blunt object, and he probably died between the ages of 40 and 50. Since the bone ends showed signs of biomechanical pressure, the guy may have used the weapon he was buried with as a prosthetic. Indeed, he may have used the knife instead of a hand for a long time, based on other clues found on the body. The man's teeth, especially on the right side of his mouth, were very worn. This means that he probably used them to tighten the straps that held his prosthesis in place. Due to their extreme wear and tear, he'd opened up a pulp cavity in his teeth, which led to a bacterial infection. On his shoulder, he also had grown a C-shaped bone ridge. This may have happened as a result of keeping the shoulder extended as he tightened the prosthesis with his teeth. It's amazing what we can learn about these kind of things, but imagine how scary this dude probably once was. Number 18. World's oldest cheese unearthed an Egyptian tomb. Killings, war, sacrificing children. In the past, things were scary, but at least they had cheese, apparently. In Saqqara, Egypt, archaeologists found a piece of cheese that had been buried 3,300 years ago in the tomb of a pharaoh's official. This is the most ancient cheese ever found. The bad news is you can't eat it, so put down your ham and toast if you're thinking of melting it all over a tasty sandwich. After being locked in a tomb for more than 3,000 years, even cheese can go bad. This wouldn't taste good no matter how much of anything you add. It was made by mixing cow milk with either goat milk or sheep's milk. Many people also think that it's cursed, 
I guess that's just one more reason you shouldn't try and grate it on your pasta. If you ate some of this cheese, the curse would have to work pretty quick to kill you faster than the bacteria that lives in it though. This cheese has one of the common and very dangerous bacteria that makes unpasteurized cheese dangerous, even today. This bacteria causes brucellosis, a disease that isn't necessarily fatal, but is very painful and it can damage the heart. This cheese would have tasted very sour and had a texture kind of like chevre that could be spread. High-ranking people in the old city of Memphis liked it, so we know it was probably good. Number 17. Spiral-shaped mass burial. A number of ancient Mesoamerican civilizations like the Maya and the Aztecs put a lot of importance on religious sacrifice and elaborate funeral ceremonies. Archaeologists digging under Mexico City seem to find bones in strange places and arrangements all the time like this Aztec temple with 32 sets of neck bones and elaborate racks of mounted skulls. Archaeologists at the National Institution of Anthropology and History don't get surprised very often, but this find did just that. Under the Pontifical University of Mexico in the city's Tlalpan neighborhood, they found 10 human skeletons arranged in a spiral. Oh right, like a White Walker, okay. The arms of the skeletons seem to have been locked together when they were buried. This grave, which is over 2,400 years old, is the strangest find at the site, which has been dug up since 2006. It's also the largest number of skeletons found in a single burial from the pre-classic period of Mesoamerican history. Researchers identified some of the remains as belonging to two women and one man, as well as a toddler and an infant. It looks like they were buried in a single ritual, but we don't know what it is. There were people of many different ages in the grave, which suggests that they might have represented different stages of life. Number 16. Archaeologists have discovered an ancient Roman hand of God. Archaeologists have found a hand of God from ancient Rome, but the story it tells is tragic and it has nothing to do with heaven. The hand, which weighed 2.3 kilos and was made of solid bronze, was found near Hadrian's Wall. It was almost certainly a gift to a military god for helping the Romans win their biggest military battle ever fought in Britain. The operation was a Roman invasion of Scotland in 209 to 210 AD that isn't very well known. It was also likely one of the bloodiest events in British history. It was made by a Roman invasion force of 50,000 people, some of whom went as far north as Aberdeenshire. Most likely, thousands of people from the Caledonian and Maya'tai tribal confederations were killed in the area that's now Scotland. The Romans said that the native chieftains had broken a peace agreement and were therefore rebels, not just normal enemies. It's likely that one of the Roman commanders who had been in the battle buried the sacred bronze hand as part of a ritual. Shortly after the war ended, the bronze hand was left in a wet area near a Roman fort at Vindolanda on Hadrian's Wall in Northumberland. This area has religious significance. It was connected to a Roman god from the Middle East named Jupiter, Dolichinus, who was originally a local Syrian version of the Roman king of the gods, Jupiter. It was probably put in a small bog as a part of a religious ceremony to celebrate the completion of a temple to a god that was only 15 meters away. Number 15. Pompeii man found crushed to death by large stone while fleeing Mount Vesuvius. Next up, archaeologists in Pompeii have found the body of a man who was killed by a large rock while trying to get away from the exploding volcano. Wow, what a crazy image. I don't think anyone would survive that kind of impact. Yeah, he's definitely dead. In 79 AD, the nearby Mount Vesuvius erupted, killing many people who lived in Pompeii and freezing them in place for all of time. This skeleton looks like it belonged to a man who was in the city during the first explosion, but got out before it was destroyed, or tried to. But an injury to his leg might have slowed him down before he was crushed by the huge stone flying through the air. Archaeologists in Pompeii say that the leg bone of the skeleton shown signs of infection. He might have had a hard time walking, let alone running. But slow-moving molten lava didn't kill most of the people who died in Pompeii. Instead, a pyroclastic flow, which is a huge cloud of hot gas and stone shards swept over the city, killing people wherever they were and burying them in ash to keep their last moment in time. Archaeologists think that this deadly cloud hit their newest find and knocked the man back when he turned to look at it. The man, who is thought to be in his 30s, was found on the first floor of a building, above a layer of small stones carried by the deadly cloud. Number 14. New finding at China's Shansing Dui ruins stun archaeologists. 
Now over to China, where archaeologists recently showed off some big finds at the San Xingdui ruins in Sichuan Province in southwest China. After working on site for a while, pits number 7 and number 8 were dug down to the utensil layer, where a lot of pieces of ivory were found. A new bronze holy tree was found in the hole earlier, and most of the cultural artifacts are being cleaned and fixed now. Since the site revealed that there were six more pits, the long-awaited archaeological dig at the San Xin Dui ruin site has been taking place. So far, about 10,000 cultural artifacts from about 3,000 years ago have been found. Archaeologists found two large sacrificial pits with thousands of rare ancient treasures at the San Xin Dui ruin site in 1986. These pits provide historical evidence of the ancient Shu kingdom from 5,000 years ago and are considered one of the most important ancient sites in the world. During the current dig, some very rare and important huge bronze containers were found in the number 8 sacrifice pit. It's likely that some of these are new national treasures. Number 13. Hobbits, because of their height, were first uncovered in an Indonesian cave. The remains of a previously unknown species of human have been discovered in the Philippines. Homo luzonensis's appearance is a mashup of ancient humans and more modern humans. As a result, it's now thought possible that early human ancestors traveled all the way from Africa to Southeast Asia. This discovery suggests that there may have been three or more distinct human species in the area at the same time as our forebearers. Homo floresiensis, sometimes known as the Hobbit, was a diminutive humanoid species that existed on the Indonesian island of Flores until roughly 50,000 years ago. The new fragments from Kalau Cave in northern Luzon date back to between 67,000 and 50,000 years ago, according to scientists. They consist of 13 bones from at least three different people, including teeth, hand and foot bones, and a fragment of a femur. These have been uncovered every time the cave has been excavated since 2007. Number 12. Headless Vikings When excavating a burial mound in the English seaside resort of Weymouth in June of 2009, archaeologists made a shocking discovery. When digging for the planned Weymouth Relief Road, archaeologists uncovered a mass burial with 54 dismembered bones and 51 skulls in a pile within an abandoned Roman quarry. As a result of this particular discovery, many people were baffled as to who these people were and why they were killed in such a horrific fashion. Using rigorous scientific methods, the archaeologists determined that the remains belonged to Norse raiders. Given the extent of the burial, this discovery comes as a shock since any mass grave is a relatively rare find. But to find one on this scale, from this period of history, is extremely unusual. The bones are presumed to be those of people who lived in the early Middle Ages, between the 5th and the 10th centuries, while the precise date of the burial has not been determined. The fighting between the Anglo-Saxons and the Viking invaders undoubtedly caused and contributed to the deaths. They mostly appear to be those of men in their late teens and early 20s, with a few slightly older people sprinkled in. No one appears to have been killed in battle, and all of the victims show symptoms of having been executed. No articles of clothes or other items were located in the hole, leading some to conclude that the men were killed while completely disrobed, perhaps as further humiliation. Number 11. Moa Birdfoot An archaeological crew researching a vast cave system on New Zealand's Mount Owen discovered a frightening and odd artifact more than three decades ago. Because of the cave's low light levels, they were confused by what they saw in front of them. A huge claw that looked like that of a dinosaur, complete with flesh and scaly skin. This claw was in such immaculate condition that it could have only originated from a recently deceased animal. The claw was quickly retrieved and brought to experts to study. The extraordinary find consisted of the mummified bones of an upland moa, a big extinct bird that lived 3,300 years ago and then disappeared. New Zealand was home to a unique species of moa, known as the upland moa. DNA research claims that moa initially arose about 18.5 million years ago, and that there were at least 10 species before they were extinguished in the fastest human-facilitated megafauna extinction known to date. And this claw is evidence of that event. People were killing and mummifying moa birds a little too enthusiastically, it seems. And now, sadly, there's none left. Native tribes should be praised for being at one with nature in so many ways. 
and yet on other occasions they show that they can be just as careless as any other group of people who are known to be careless. Number 10. War Trophy Grave The discovery of seven bones in a circular pit with a bed of severed arms provides new insight into violent fights that occurred over 6,000 years ago. According to the experts, the grisly find recounts the story of a horrific raid on a village in eastern France that may have wiped out an entire family. The savage assailants may have tortured their victims and then buried their remains, all in the name of a trophy kill. Researchers from Anti Archaeologie in Habeshim, as well as colleagues from the University of Strasbourg and Bordeaux, uncovered the circular hole, which measured 6.5 feet in depth. The hole was near the town of Bergheim, France. Several human skeletons, including part of a child's head, sit atop the limbs of seven other humans who had their limbs removed. It's speculated that a raid or another type of violent confrontation led to the deaths of two adults, one female, and four children. There was a mound of left arms on top of the victims, and investigators believe the arms were broken and then severed with hand axes. Fragmented hand bones found on the lower stratum point to a grisly end. The skeletons on top of them, with the exception of one male, have both of their arms, thus it's unclear who they belong to. The experts aren't sure if the burial was random or part of a macabre ceremony performed after a war. No one knows why the assailants singled out the victim's left arms, but they suspect the limbs were severed as war trophies. Number 9. Remains of 17th Century Vampire Discovered in Poland Skeletal remains of a young lady were discovered during excavations in northern Poland. She was buried with a sickle around her neck and a padlock on her foot, both of which may have been intended to prevent her from rising from the dead as a vampire. Bone research revealed the victim to have been a female between the ages of 17 and 21. Anti-vampire procedures include the iron sickle around her neck and the padlock on her left big toe. Sickles and other sharp implements were used to decapitate the dead in Slavic folklore, to stop them from rising to haunt the living. Yet, the recent find in the town of Pai is the first instance in Poland's archaeological record of a burial with both a sickle and a padlock. According to historical accounts, locals may have assumed a person was a vampire if they were an outcast for any reason, such as being foreign, born out of wedlock accused of practicing witchcraft, sporting odd physical traits, or just being sick. And from there, it was gonna be a bad time for the accused vampire. Number 8. Gobekli Tepe Before the Egyptian pyramids were built, Gobekli Tepe was already standing, and it's now known as the oldest religious structure in the whole world. This stunning temple complex in southern Turkey, not far from the Syrian border, has been called the very first thing human beings ever built. At least 50 massive T-shaped pillars, some as high as 17 feet, decorated with intricate reliefs of totem animals like wildcats, symbols of death like carrion birds, and game animals like the wild boar that still roam on these hills today were built by hunter-gatherers before the invention of pottery, agriculture, domestic animals, or even writing. Formerly covering the entire hillside and visible from quite far away, these early Neolithic monoliths measured 30 to 100 feet in diameter, weighed up to 20 tons, and were encased in roughly 20 concentric rings. Once upon a time, it was believed that such a massive structure could not have been built by such an ancient people. Without a doubt, this was not a settlement, but rather a holy center where ancient peoples gathered for ceremonies. By showing that collective devotion, rather than the city that begat the temple, gathered mankind together, Gobekli Tepe has the potential to change long-held views of social formation. Number 7. Terracotta Army Sometimes it's best just to let things be. For example, the 6,000 terracotta warriors buried with Emperor Qin Shi Huang in China's Xi'an. More than 2,000 years ago, China's first emperor was laid to rest in the grandest tomb complex the country had ever seen. Even its defenses, including a mercury moat, are extraordinary. It has a vast underground tunnel system the size of a city, housing everything the emperor may have needed in the afterlife. There's clay figures of the Qin Emperor's soldiers, concubines, officials, and slaves buried with him in his tomb. 
Farmers excavating wells near Xi'an in 1974 made the initial discovery of the 8,000 life-size clay figures. There's a tight rein on further excavation until new technologies are developed that can safely unearth priceless artifacts without causing any damage to them. And because of the reported moat of dangerous mercury surrounding the site of the Chinese emperor's primary burial, researchers are also prohibited from diving inside the center tomb, which housed Qin's palace. Number 6. Roman Dodecahedrons These ancient Roman dodecahedrons from the 2nd and 3rd century AD continue to baffle historians and archaeologists today. The pentagonal shaped device ranges in size from around 3 centimeters to 10 centimeters and feature big holes on all sides and knobs on each point. The artifact has been interpreted in various ways, some suggesting that it was a measuring device or a religious relic. We do know that the owners placed a high value on them, as hundreds have been uncovered all over Europe. In 1739, a Roman dodecahedron was discovered for the very first time. Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, Hungary, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and the UK have all reported finding at least one identical object since then. Dodecahedrons are not depicted in any pre-modern artwork or written records. Findings of dodecahedra in coin hoards suggest that their owners either valued them highly or associated them exclusively with monetary transactions. There's also speculation that they were used for divination or as holy items. Number 5. The Copper Scroll Treasure Among the many important scrolls found on the northern side of the Dead Sea in the spring of 1952 is the Copper Scroll. Unlike the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were discovered in 1946 and are made of parchment, the Copper Scroll is made of copper and it features detailed lettering. The tablet has been the subject of much speculation because some believe it could lead to the location of a massive hoard of gold and silver that was buried in several locations around Jerusalem before the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 AD. In the spring of 1952, in the same cave at Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls had been found in 1946, a single copper scroll was uncovered. The writings on the scroll claim that the treasure trove contains 1,280 talents of gold coins and more than 65 bars of pure gold. And yeah, you can bet that ever since then people have been trying to find this incredible hoard. Number 4. Darren Kuyu Located in the Derinkuyu neighborhood in Turkey's Nevashir province, at a depth of 85 meters, is the multi-leveled underground city of Derinkuyu. It may have been able to provide as many as 20,000 people with livestock and food. To date, it's Turkey's largest excavated underground city and one of many such complexes found across Cappadocia. Facilities like wine and oil presses, stables, cellars, storage chambers, refectories and chapels were present in the city, as are common in other underground complexes throughout Cappadocia. The Darren Kuyu complex is home to an enormous chamber with a barreled vaulted roof which can be found on the upper floor. This space served as a religious academy, while the adjacent rooms were used for academic pursuits. Darren Kuyu was fully constructed and extensively used as a stronghold during the Arab Byzantine Wars, which happened from 780 to 1180 AD. The city was connected to other metropolises in the network by tunnels stretching for kilometers. The Middle Byzantine period, which lasted from the 5th through the 9th century, is represented in some of the artifacts discovered in the underground settlements. Well into the 20th century, the local population, Greeks from Cappadocia, used the underground cities as a refuge from persecution. Number 3. The Sound Effects of Hypogeum Hal Safliani in Paola, Malta, lies the Hypogeum of Hal Safliani, a subterranean Neolithic structure from the Safliani period, which ran from 3300 to 2000 BC. The term Hypogeum, derived from the Greek meaning underground, is commonly used to refer to this area. It's believed that the Hypogeum served as both a place of worship and a cemetery, as the remains of more than 7,000 people have been discovered there. In addition to the megalithic temples and the Shara stone circle, it's one of the finest examples of Maltese temple architecture. It all started 
started in 1902 when construction workers excavating cisterns for the new housing complex collapsed through the hypogeum ceiling. Construction workers initially attempted to conceal the shrine, but it was discovered later. Grave goods and human bones were among the artifacts unearthed from the hypogeum, which were sadly discarded without being properly documented. Due to its design, the temple's lowest levels are bathed in natural sunlight. Spots, spirals, and honeycombs serve as the basis for the elaborate ceiling decorations that cover some of the ceiling surface. One of the most important rooms, the Holy of Holies, was apparently designed such that the light Light from the winter solstice would enter the space through the original hole in the ceiling and illuminate the altar at the front of the room. Pretty spectacular. Number 2. Puma Punku Recent years have seen a surge in tourism to the remains of Puma Punku, a sacred site in the Bolivian Amazon. According to archaeologists, Puma Punku, which translates to Door of the Puma, was a thriving ancient city that flourished between 500 and 600 CE. Even in the modern era of the 21st century, legends persist that the massive stone blocks used to construct Puma Punku's buildings were cut with such accuracy that only highly developed ancient technology could explain them. Puma Punku is situated on a desert plateau of the Andes Mountains at an altitude of over 12,000 feet, some 45 miles west of modern-day La Paz and close to the still-thriving metropolis of Tiwanaku. The Incas prominently included Tiwanaku in their myths since it was believed to be the place where everything began. Incredible smooth stone buildings with finely formed cuts, perfect straight angles, and precisely fitted connections are all on display here. The megaliths are quite large, with some weighing several tons. Several of the buildings are still standing long after their inhabitants departed, but many others are scattered and broken all over the landscape, leaving academics to wonder what might have brought them down. Number 1. Archaeologists in Kenya discover the oldest known human burial site in Africa. The oldest human grave in Africa dates back about 80,000 years, and it's located in a cemetery. The bones were given the Swahili name Mtoto, meaning child. An estimated 78,000 years ago, a child between the ages of 2 and 3 was laid to rest here. It was discovered in 2013 at the entrance to the Panga Yasaidi cave in the Kenyan highlands. As archaeologists attempted to remove fragments of old bones, too many of them were breaking in the process. In order to transport the grave to the National Museums of Kenya for further study, the crew had to dig a hole around the skeletons and plaster the entire edifice so it could be removed as one piece safely. The child's body was intentionally laid to rest, as evidenced by its posture. This conclusion is supported by a technical analysis of the soil. Footprints and the shells of snails that eat the earthworms that are commonly discovered around human remains are evidence that the burial hole was specifically dug for a ritual burial, one of the earliest such burials ever discovered. So, do you have an explanation for these terrifying things? Do you think people in the past were way more advanced than we're willing to admit? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!